Hi guys, welcome to Piscator UK Fishing Channel right here in Scotland. What I'm going to be doing today is sharing with you the step-by-step -step methods into producing hot smoked salmon. Now these methods are used by traditional Scottish smokehouses into producing that flavour. And if you love this flavour of smoked salmon, you already know that Scottish smoked salmon has a flavour that is renowned throughout the world. Well, I'm going to be sharing with you how to achieve that flavour at home and I'm going to be doing the smoking process on a budget barbecue smoker. So keep watching guys. Right guys, I'm going to jump straight into my method of doing hot smoked salmon using a budget barbecue smoker. Firstly, I'm going to take you through the, the brining method that I use and I use a wet brining method for hot smoked salmon. So this is all you're going to need to do your wet brine for hot smoked salmon. Firstly I've got my salmon here which has all been portioned up into roughly the same thickness, same size portions. This is farm salmon and I think it's every bit as good as wild salmon. The ingredients and things you're going to need for the wet brine is going to be a plastic bucket large enough to take all your portioned fish. If you haven't got a plastic bucket you could use a plastic Tupperware box, a glass dish but just don't use metal as the salt is going to react with the metal. I've got a wooden spoon or you can use a plastic spoon again don't use a metal spoon or, a, or something metal that you're going to use to stir your brine. I've got 270 grams of granulated kosher salt, 360 grams of brown sugar. Now this brown sugar is demerara sugar. Now you can just use any soft brown sugar if you want but I use demerara sugar purely because it gives a little bit of flavour, it's a little bit caramelly type flavour. So I'm just going to jump in and show you my routine on how to do the wet brine. So guys when it comes on to doing your brine, if you follow this method then you, you can't go wrong. Firstly add your, your dry ingredients to your plastic dish or bucket, your 270 grams of kosher salt, your 360 grams of brown sugar or demerara sugar. Just give that a mix and your final ingredient is going to be water. Now I've got a litre of hot water that's just out the kettle. And this is going to dissolve your sugar and it's going to dissolve your salt. So give that a good mix until the ingredients are dissolved. And once all your ingredients is dissolved in your hot water, what I do next is I add in the same jug that I used for the water, the hot water, this is full with ice cubes. And I add that to the hot water. And this is just going to cool it down now so you can add your salmon in afterwards. So just give this a stir until all the ice cubes have been dissolved and then you'll be ready to add your salmon to your dish. So once all your ice cubes are dissolved, you're then ready to add your fish to your wet brine. Now what I'd like to do is just, I like to start layering it up and the first one goes in skin side down. Just make sure they're coated. And the second layer goes in flesh side down. Again, just make sure they're coated because they will be touching inside the bucket or your dish. Next layer, skin side down. Again, just making sure they're coated. And my last layer, flesh side down. Depending on how many you're doing will obviously depend on your uh, size of bucket, 
or your dish that you're using. If you're going to be doing a big batch and you've got a larger pail or a larger plastic dish, you can just double up on your ingredients and you'll come up with the same results. So you can just double the salt, double your sugar and double your liquid. The main thing here is that everything is coated properly. As you see these are floating so the last thing you do is put on a, some sort of weight just to submerge them in the liquid brine. So I have my porcelain plate so just add a little bit of weight and I can submerge all the portions underneath the brine. So once you've got your weight on and you're happy, put on your lid. And this is going to go into the refrigerator for 20 to 22 hours. Now guys, when you put this in the refrigerator, like I said, it's going in for 20 to 22 hours. Don't cut it short, any shorter than 20 hours. Otherwise, you're not going to get the required result. Now you are going to see, or you've maybe seen videos already, how to do smoked salmon quickly, brining quickly. The brining process is one of the major parts of good smoked salmon. And the reason I know this is I used to work in a smokehouse and there's critical points to producing perfect smoked salmon. And the first one is brining with the correct amount of ingredients and brining for the correct amount of time. So let's say this is hot smoked. It's in a wet brine. That's my preferred method of brine in my fish. Some people do use dry brine but dry brine is only supposed to be used for cold smoking fish because it's a harsher brine and you need to change the consistency for cold smoking to be effective and that consistency is obviously a lot firmer that's why traditionally for cold smoking you use a dry brine because you want that consistency of the fish to change to really firm. So Preferred method is wet brine. Traditional method for hot smoking is wet brine. I'm going to go in the refrigerator now for 20 to 22 hours and we'll see what it looks like when it comes out ready for the next stage, which is going to be drying the fish. Another key and critical part of hot smoking and cold smoking fish. Hi right guys, a bit of a progress check on the wet brine. So this has been curing in the wet brine for 12 hours now. So with clean hands already, so we're halfway through the, <coughs> the curing process. Uh, it's still a little bit limp but it is firming up. So what I'm going to do now is just put my hands into the brine, just making sure that any bits are not stuck together. Give me a little bit of a mix around. Put your weight back on. Lit back on and this is going back in the fridge for another 10 hours. Okay, so the next process is going to be washing the, the salmon portions ready for drying. These have been curing now in the wet brine for 24 hours. So under really cold water, when you rinse them off, making sure there's no deposits left on the portions, give them a dry with some paper towel ready for drying. So they're a lot, a lot stiffer than they, they were before they started and that's because the, the cure has penetrated the, the portion a little bit darker in colour just put them somewhere clean I'm just putting them on the, the draining section of the sink and if you've dissolved the, the dry ingredients like I suggested in the hot water first you're not going to have any thick deposits as such on your fish portions because it's all liquid. So the next stage is you want to take your salmon portions, put them on your tray ready for drying and just prior to putting them on the tray I just like to give them a bit of a pat dry, take off any excessive moisture uh, from running them under the, the tap, skin side flesh side
skin side all surfaces including the sides and if there's any little bits of scales from the skin you can remove them at this stage just make sure that there's a gap between the your portions and they're not touching and otherwise they won't dry properly and you'll have uh, wet spots so one final pat dry while they're sitting there ready to go in the refrigerator so guys these are going to go in the refrigerator now for about 20 to 24 hours at about the 20 hour mark I will check them give them a little press uh, making sure they're dry and this is another crucial part to the smoking process for hot smoked salmon uh, some people do try and speed up this process uh, they maybe keep them at room temperature and they'll put a fan on them and, and all that sort of stuff because I've worked in a, a commercial smokehouse a salmon smokehouse that would never be done because a crucial part of the process is temperature control and if your fillets are left out uh, in a warm temperature whether it's in your house or outside uh, you can get bacteria growing on your fish because the temperature is outside of the parameters for safety that's why drying process should be done in the refrigerator which is going to be between three and eight degrees and that is perfect for keeping the fish uh, from producing any bacteria growing on the fish so these are going to go in the refrigerator now and we'll pull them out around about 20-24 hours uh, depending on the consistency, the texture and what you want to achieve is a good dryness throughout the fish and more importantly that a protective skin is formed on each of the, the portions which is called a pellicle and I'll show you what that looks like uh, when we bring them out of the fridge so pop them in the fridge and these are going in here for 20 to 24 hours going in the fridge uncovered just one point I would like to to make is if you're putting your your fish in the fridge uncovered is just make sure that there's no other strong smelling products in your fridge like chopped onions strong smelling cheeses etc because the salmon is an oily fish they take on smells and taints really easily and you'll be able to taste that in your finished product. Okay guys, so the salmon has just finished their second stage which has been drying in the refrigerator overnight and it's been almost 22 hours and I would recommend that you air dry your fish in the refrigerator if possible for about 20 to 24 hours maximum. So I'm going to get them out of the refrigerator, pop them on the counter and then give you a look. That's a bad boys, looking good. Yeah, they're looking excellent. And I'll try and get some close-ups of the fish. And as you can see, on a close-up, the salmon actually looks wet, but it's not. It's really dry, it's really firm, it's a little bit tacky to touch, and as you can see, dry. Now, with air drying them in the refrigerator, it forms a protective skin uh, over each fillet, and that's that protective skin is called a pellicle. And that protection is really important when it comes on to the next section, which is going to be uh, smoking the fish. And that just allows the moisture within the fish to be retained, it doesn't allow the heat to penetrate quickly, it allows it to do it more slowly, more subtle and it just gives a, a, a better overall finish to the fish. So because they have been in the refrigerator, obviously they're really cold, they're probably about 3 or 4 degrees and I'm going to leave them on the counter uncovered, there's no flies at the moment, it's really cold here in Scotland and I'm going to just let them come up to room temperature for about 2 hours and that way they can go straight into the smoker they don't need to come up to temperature first they're going to be at a good temperature almost you know sort of 20 degrees and then fire them in the smoker and they're going to start the process the smoking straight away rather than having to come up to temperature first
Hi guys, what I thought I'd do is I would just show you my budget barbecue smoker that I've got before I jump into doing the, the actual smoking of the fish and I'm just going to go around the barbecue smoker and let you see what modifications I've had to do in order for me to do the smoked fish the way I'm going to do it. Now all the modifications are really inexpensive, in fact it might not even cost you anything and little bits of equipment that I need so that the smoked fish comes out perfectly. So this is a budget barbecue smoker. Disregard this part, that's an additional part and I'm going to come onto that in a lot later and it's not what I use at the moment for my smoked fish, it's just something I'm working on uh, but I'm just going to, like I say, break it down a little bit and show you the additional pieces of equipment and modifications that I've had to do for the smoked fish. Budget barbecue smoker, purchased on Amazon, probably about 40 bucks and you know I, I can make that do what I need to do in order to get perfect smoked fish. Comes with three sections, your lid, middle section, bottom section. It's got two doors, one for where you can add your coals etc and one where you can actually have a sort of viewing area and you can check your fish on this level. It's got two handles and a a handle on the top. So as you can see I've put it on a base and I've made a little shelf here if you like which is my other part of equipment that I, I use for doing the, the hot smoked fish and what I use is a relatively inexpensive uh, gas burner and you can get these at uh, you know most supermarkets these days at the outdoor section or camping section and you know you can get them for like 10 bucks at the most little modification I've had to do for this because it's such cold weather we're in winter here now in Scotland and you know when you're operating in outside temperatures are like 0 to 5 degrees I've just done a little mod which is just some aluminum foil I've created a little collar so that the heat source is more concentrated towards the bottom so what I like to do for my hot smoke fish is I put the burner underneath so that the heat source is coming from the outside so for hot smoke fish, my heat source is not inside here. And outside temperature does have a big part to play in it. And another modification that I've had to do, which is really inexpensive, uh, to keep the heat in, and which allows me to heat up the barbecue a lot quicker as well, is I've had to seal the bottom unit. The bottom unit of this barbecue is open. I don't know if you can see the bottom tray there, but that bottom tray just sits on a little bracket and it's open all the way around. So that lets a lot of cold air in. So what I've done is I've sealed it up from the inside just using a plain flour, salt and water mix into a thick dough. I'll take that off and I'll show you. So as you can see inside I've made a thick dough just with the flour, salt and a little bit of water so it can make it into a dough and it's pliable and I've just sealed that gap that goes all the way around in the bottom and I have the tiniest of holes which is probably about a centimetre, half a centimetre just to allow a little bit of airflow. Now this has actually started to dry because I've already smoked in it before and I don't know if you can make out but there's just a little bit of light coming through on the side of the, the dough. That's fine. It's a minimal amount but the majority of the heat is going to be retained within here and more importantly the cold air is not going to be penetrating the inside which is going to affect your overall temperature and which can overall affect the time it takes for you to actually smoke your fish properly. That's a bar the budget barbecue smoker. It's like I said 40 bucks on Amazon and that this does do perfect smoked fish hot and cold as long as you use the, the techniques and the additional pieces of equipment that I use uh, which are really inexpensive so overall a 40 bucks piece of equipment along with my gas burner and you even get gas bottles with your, with your burner and a full gas bottle will do your full uh, smoking process and you know overall total 50 bucks which is ideal now obviously there is barbecue smokers and smokers out there that are more expensive and they will do the job a lot better, they'll retain heat. In terms of cost, the reason I'm doing this is because it is so easy, it's so simple and it's so cheap. And you get perfect results which I think is the main thing. 
So the next thing guys you see this, I will be firing it up ready for smoking the fish. Hi guys, I'm going to be doing the hot smoked salmon now that the salmon is properly dried out. It's been drying out for uh, about 22-23 hours. And before I go into the hot smoking there is a few fundamentals that you need to know about hot smoking salmon. And the main thing is temperature. Now, hot smoked salmon is cooked but it's just cooked. Like any fish you should never overcook but it's the time it takes to reach that temperature that's key and the longer you take to reach that temperature the better result you're going to have. So the temperature that you need to achieve for hot smoked salmon is between 50 and 60 degrees which is 122 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit within your smoker. Now the temperature today is zero degrees it's just above zero so it's about 30 degrees Fahrenheit so I do think it's going to take a little bit longer than usual to do the hot smoked salmon and I'm probably looking about four hours which is good because for me the slower you can do it the better but as long as you achieve at the end a temperature an internal temperature of about 55 degrees something like that and that means that the salmon is not overcooked and it'll have the time to be smoked properly. The chips I like to use for the smoking process this is beechwood chips and it's not a dust but they're not large chunk they're sort of small chips if i'm not using beech i like to use alder which is another excellent smoking chip for fish so i'm going to light the barbecue the gas is in full bottle and i've got it on high just now and what i will do is check the temperature as it progresses making sure that it doesn't get too hot if it gets too hot uh, which will speed up the process which i don't want to do I'll turn it down to get the required temperature. <clears throat> One other additional piece of equipment that you will need because the gauges on these cheaper barbecues, I don't know if you can see that, but the first increment is 100 degrees, which is far too hot anyway for doing hot smoked salmon. So an inexpensive digital thermometer is something that you're going to need because you're going to be operating at temperatures below 100 degrees and I just check the temperature every now and again from the top of the barbecue just to make sure that it's not too hot and if it's too cold it means it's going to take too long to cook then you know I'll increase the temperature. So now that the base is hot inside the smoker I'm going to add a few handfuls of chips into the base And already that's starting to smoke. Now one of the things you need to do is obviously you need to keep an eye on your chips. If they start obviously being burnt off then you need to keep adding a little bit at a time. Maybe check on it every half an hour. These will just smolder away really slowly and you'll get a really good smoky flavour. Shut the door. Now as you can see the smoke chips are smoking away and what I like to do is your barbecue comes with another tray pan. I like to put that on the first level because once your fish starts to cook and it gets close to the end temperature it starts to leach oils from your fish and those oils will catch in the pan rather than go dripping onto your heat source which is going to cause additional smoke plus that smoke with the oil will be acrid tasting and you don't want that on your end result. So guys the fish is ready to go on the top of the smoker. Uh, I'm going to put them on the top level as the middle level which is at that section here is closer to the heat source and I'd rather be further away from the heat source than too close to it as I don't want it to cook too quickly. So if you're doing a, a double batch uh, which is more than one tray obviously you have one at this section here and one down here which is closer to your heat source so every hour I just like to swap them about so that the top layer is getting the same amount of heat as the bottom layer and vice versa. So when your fish is on the rack what I do just before I put the fish on the rack is I just give the rack a light oil in with some light olive oil. You can use a spray if you want. Uh, it just prevents any sticking to the rack. But 
if you're smoking at the correct temperature it shouldn't really stick all that much anyway and just make sure that your portions are evenly spaced out and that they're not touching so that the smoke can penetrate all surfaces so we'll get these onto the smoker as I say I'm putting these on the the top rack and just a final check make sure they're not touching and as you see it's on the top rack bottom rack put the lid on making sure it's on properly the vents open to let out some smoke, a bit of airflow, and you're going to get that airflow coming in from the tiny hole that you have on the bottom. Now, as you can see from the fixed gauge, that it's below the hundred. I've turned the gas down from the initial start up, uh, as the bottom section was quite hot, and I've turned it down low. And what I'll do is I'm going to check from the top using the digital thermometer making sure that I'm round about 50 degrees which is 122 or so degrees Fahrenheit so the fish has been smoking away now for about 10 minutes and I just want to show you the temperature that you want to achieve which is between 50 and 60 degrees or 122 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit so as you can see 51.9 and I'm just going to keep it round about the 51, 52, no higher than 60 degrees and you just want to check on your fish or check your barbecue you just want to check your barbecue every sort of 45 minutes or an hour and this is going to smoke today for 4 hours it's starting to snow here in Scotland so it is really cold and I know that it will take a little bit longer because of the outside temperature monitoring your fish is really important monitoring your temperature I should say is most important you don't want your temperature to climb too high uh, otherwise your fish is going to cook too quickly without having the proper smoke time if you leave your fish in there too long even for the correct amount of time the fish is going to be overcooked most of the oils are going to be released from that fish and you're going to end up with a below par product it will be smoky but it will be overcooked and it'll be really dry uh, which you don't want so let's say check on it every hour making sure that you have enough chips in the bottom and you just want to keep feeding that on an hourly basis to make sure that you've got consistent smoke throughout the product Hi guys, do a quick check on the fish it's been two hours that they've been smoking for and uh, yeah, I'll let you see what it looks like so as you can see temperature is holding about 52 degrees which is perfect nice bit of smoke and they start to change colour still soft and they're going to get another 2 hours smoking time and we'll see what it's like in two hours. If they're not quite ready, I'll give them a little bit longer. Uh, I will check hourly as well, just to make sure that they're not overcooking. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. Right guys, as you can see, darkness has now fallen. The smoking process has took a little bit longer than expected today because of the outside weather. Uh, the wind picked up, it was affecting the outside temperature and it took a little bit longer. But that's what's something that you've got to deal with when you're cooking outside and you're using an external heat source anyway the fish is ready now and it's took five hours today but I haven't rushed it I haven't increased the temperature to try and get the fish cooked a little bit quicker and I'll give you a quick show before I take it in the house so as you can see on the temperature gauge it reads 54.9 degrees which is about 131 degrees Fahrenheit the fish has maintained its moisture 
it's a little bit bouncy it's not hard there's a little bit given it and as you can see all the oils are still maintained in the fish there's none leached out there's no skin broke out and let's say I'll give you a show in the house get a better view of the fish okay so the fish is now in the house and as you can see fantastic color on the fish and you would think that I've actually glazed this but I haven't it's just that natural pellicle that's formed during the drying process has given it that protection and all the moisture is actually maintained within the fish I'm going to transfer it to the board and then I'm going to give you a nice big fat close-up so here we are guys perfectly cooked hot smoked salmon lovely color nice sheen on the fish and at this stage while the fish is still warm you can choose to add additional flavours to your fish you can glaze it with honey, maple syrup, sweet chilli sauce some people use apricot jam and it's an ideal opportunity to do it at this stage when it's still warm and those flavours can meld into the fish so guys that's my take on perfect hot smoked salmon the smoking process did take a lot longer today than expected because of the outside conditions it was cold to start with and the wind picked up which affected the outside temperature which infected the inside temperature as well it was affecting the burner the main thing is if that happens is not to rush it it just means that the process is going to take that little bit longer what I will say is if you follow all the steps that I've went through uh, and procedures then you will end up with great results every bit as good as traditional hot smoked fish that you would find in a, a traditional smokehouse as I said, I learned what to do in a traditional smokehouse and what I will say again is there's many recipes out there, many techniques, videos showing that hot smoked can be done quickly or cold smoked can be done quickly. Guys, you cannot rush this process. It starts off with brining with the proper ingredients, the correct amount of ingredients, being brined for the correct amount of time and then obviously drying, which is another essential part to the smoking process. Drying should not be rushed and it should be done for a good period of time between 20 and 24 hours. I hope you enjoyed the video guys, hope you found it interesting and hopefully you can get good results like I do hot smoking fish at home on a budget barbecue smoker. If you liked the video give a thumbs up and if you want to see more you'll see my cool smoking video up next. Thanks very much for watching.